It's 2017 and another day at work as an archaeologist for the National Institute of Anthropology and History. One milk and two sugars in your coffee. You settle down into your chair in front of the computer. Who would think this would be the day you'd discover a secret passage to the underworld in one of the most important yet mysterious pyramids in the world? Not you. Not today. Your job isn't quite as exciting as people seem to think when you tell them you're an archaeologist. You definitely have to play the long game. Rather than digging up ancient ruins at historical sites every day, you're spending your time looking at a computer screen, trying to map out images and scans from the office, instead of being directly involved in the action. You still love what you do, of course, but it's not exactly glamorous. Right now, you're working on a collaboration with the Geography Institute of a local university, the Autonomous University of Mexico, to find out more about a pyramid at one of the most significant historical sites in Mexico, Teotihuacan. The area is a huge tourist attraction and has extremely well-preserved ruins. But you've wanted to know what lies beneath the surface for a long time, and nobody has ever looked below the Pyramid of the Moon as you are now. Along with your team, you've been mapping the area digitally, and now you're surveying the results. As you look at the subterranean map, you notice a slight cavity. Hmm, interesting. In your experience, cavities in ancient structures tend to lead to something else. Could this actually be something exciting? You call a colleague over to look at some more images together, and wait, what's this? A door? No, it's more than that, it's a whole tunnel. You're in shock as you investigate further. Already you've found more than you expected to. Discoveries like this don't happen very often. Researching more and putting everything together, you find that the Pyramid of the Moon has a hidden tunnel roughly 10 meters below the ground with a diameter of around 15 meters, and that it leads into a huge chamber, such a significant site buried under the ground for hundreds of years and invisible to the naked eye. You weren't expecting that when you arrived to work this morning. Yet the appearance of the tunnel raises more questions than it answers. Who built it? What did they build it for? and there's something eerie about that big chamber under the ground. Teotihuacan is an ancient city that dates way back to pre-Columbian times, located around 50 kilometers from what's now Mexico City. Once the heart of Mesoamerica's civilization, Teotihuacan was the most important and powerful city in the region back in its heyday and the home of 125,000 people or more. Even all these years later, it makes for an impressive sight. The first thing that strikes you when you see Teotihuacan is the towering, awe-striking pyramids. At the far end of the site is the Pyramid of the Moon, under which archaeologists recently discovered the secret tunnel. It's only the second largest pyramid at a puny 34 meters high, but it is the most elevated point in the village since it was built on an incline. It's surrounded by 12 smaller pyramids, which were probably used for sacrifices. Wasn't everything back then? Close by the Pyramid of the Moon is, you guessed it, the Pyramid of the Sun. At 66 meters tall, it's the largest pyramid, and to keep the theme going, the Pyramid of the Moon and the Pyramid of the Sun are connected by a road called the Avenue of the Dead. I don't know who created this damn village, but they were sure extra with their names. Finally, going slightly off theme, at the other end of the village is the Temple of the Feathered Serpent. Now that might sound like a slightly strange name, but we used to have to call the temple Quetzalcoatl, and I'm not complaining. The village of Teotihuacan is laid out in a grid kind of like most American cities. I guess those architects really were ahead of their time. As well as the main pyramids, it was home to thousands of apartment-like compounds, plazas, palaces, and more. Plenty of places for sacrifice, no doubt. Unfortunately, these superficial facts are pretty much the extent of our knowledge about Teotihuacan. And I've been talking in loose, vague terms about the society who built it and lived there for a reason. We don't know who they are. Most of the story of the historical site is also shrouded in mystery. It's believed that the city was founded around 150 BC, although some estimations put this as early as 400 BC. This is roughly the same time period as ancient Rome existed, but we don't have a cool, catchy name for the people who built Teotihuacan since we just don't really know anything about them. The most famous ancient civilizations from Mexico are the Mayans and the Aztecs, but neither of these groups could have been responsible for building Teotihuacan. The Mayans came from the south of the country, in Yucatan and bordering countries Guatemala and Belize, and the Aztecs didn't even come onto the scene until around 1300 AD. <sighs> you call that ancient? So who did build the city? Researchers used to believe that another ancient civilization called the Toltecs were the one who lived there, but this has since been debunked by most people in the know. Idiots. Of course it wasn't the Toltecs. An alternative idea is that the Totonacs built it. Uh, yeah, that's the Totonacs, not the Toltecs. I know, it gets confusing.
Finally, some believe Teotihuacan was built by various immigrants who fled the eruption of a nearby volcano, presumably forming some kind of multicultural utopia where everyone loved each other regardless of their background. This would make some sense since the architecture of the city has aspects from the Mayan, Mixtec, and Zapotec cultures. The little evidence available shows us that the town was probably at the peak of its influence at around 300 AD, when it was the most powerful city in the region, but like all great empires, it met its inevitable collapse. About 300 years later, in AD 750, the village was completely deserted. The descent of greatness probably began in 600 AD, because that's when many of the buildings were burned and religious sculptures were destroyed. Presumably, some kind of revolution took place against the ruling classes to cause such drastic actions of rebellion, because you do not touch the scriptures unless you are really serious. Alternatively, it's possible that the city was invaded and the attackers were the ones to start burning and destroying everything. This seems slightly unlikely considering the power and influence of Teotihuacan, but then again, maybe they should have focused on defensive military structures instead of making temples dedicated to feathered serpents and impractical secret tunnels that don't actually lead anywhere. However, all those pyramids and temples weren't built in vain. The Aztecs discovered Teotihuacan when they appeared in the 1300s and decided the village was pretty cool, so they took it for themselves. And actually, it was the Aztecs that came up with the name Teotihuacan, which means the place where men become gods, in the ancient Aztec language of Nahuatl. But if you think that's hard to pronounce, just wait till you hear its original name. It's believed that Teotihuacan used to be called Metzeli Itzakuan. But truth be told, nobody really knows much about the original civilization. Ever since the 17th century, archaeologists and historians have been trying to figure out more about the mysterious location. That's why the discovery of the tunnel is so significant. It could give historians the clues they need to get to the bottom of this once and for all. You know better than anyone the struggles that researchers before you have gone through to find out more about Teotihuacan. Although there have been a few findings there, they always lead to more questions than answers. Some archaeology researchers previously found skeletons with skull deformations in the remains of the Pyramid of the Moon, indicating that something similar could be found beneath the ground. Then, between 1998 and 2004, the remains of hundreds of animals were also found. It all pointed to something big, and that's why your institute decided to look below once and for all. And you did it without even having to break the ground, thanks to a sophisticated technique called electrical resistivity tomography. It's a fancy way of saying that you measured the electrical potential of everything below the ground to figure out if there was anything from above the earth lying beneath it. So instead of going below the ground and investigating yourself at the risk of ruining such an important site, you and your colleagues injected electric currents into the subsoil around the pyramid. This allowed you to measure the resistance of different materials found and create 2D and 3D models. The subterranean images look just like a mesh of green and yellow and red blobs at first, but seeing the resistivity of a map of the area and gauging the geologic properties helped you to discover a cavity, which turned out to be a tunnel, and examining further, you realized that the tunnel led to a whole chamber. Yet, once again, it's led to confusion. What was the so-called Pyramid of the Moon actually used for? I mean, it wasn't exactly easy to create such a deep tunnel a thousand years ago. You can be sure that the Toltecs or the Totonacs or whoever they are didn't just build one on a whim. Most researchers now think the chamber was used for funeral rituals and the tunnel was a route to the underworld. That's as good a reason as any, I suppose. Many of the features found around and beneath the Pyramid of the Moon resemble underground chambers from similar ruins that we know were used for these kind of rituals. Other tombs have contained human remains from sacrifices and other items like jewelry and grave objects, and similar items have been found near the Pyramid of the Moon. In 2004, human sacrifices of people with their hands bound behind them or even decapitated were found in the Pyramid of the Moon. Yeah, back then you needed to put your head down and avoid eye contact whenever anyone mentioned a ritual or a sacrifice. Archaeologists have also found animal remains of canines, felines, and birds, all breeds associated with warriors and fighting. The sacrifices were probably done to celebrate state power and militarism in the hope the gods would ensure Teotihuacan remained strong and prosperous forevermore. Funnily enough, it seems it didn't work. Another giveaway that the chamber was used for rituals is the presence of various green megalithic stones found near the pyramid. These stones were very valuable at the time and often used for sacred rituals, so it's unlikely that they were just there by chance. This is a further indicator that the chamber under the pyramid was used for special ceremonies.
and the tunnel? Well, we know that other cultures present in Mesoamerica at the time were very concerned with the underworld and created tunnels under their greatest monuments to emulate it. They believed that life, plants, and food were created in the underworld, so building a passage to it was another way of guaranteeing prosperity, and it was used to celebrate agricultural cycles. It seems extremely likely that the tunnel under Teotihuacan was built for this purpose too. The Pyramid of the Moon isn't the only place on the Teotihuacan site that's been found to house a tunnel below its grounds. In the 1970s, researchers discovered connections under the Pyramid of the Sun similar to those under the Pyramid of the Moon, but tantalizingly, it turned out they'd already been looted, probably by indigenous people. So we were left none the wiser about who the mysterious people who built these tunnels actually were and what intentions they had. In 2003, a sinkhole opened up in front of the Temple of the Feathered Serpent, leading to the accidental discovery of another tunnel. It was found to be 100 meters long, with the entrance eerily sealed by boulders. Here, archaeologists found around 75,000 artifacts, but they'll take many more years to analyze and restore fully, and there's even more left to discover of the chambers. Archaeologists are literally using toothbrushes to uncover remains without damaging anything, so it's gonna take a while. Interestingly, a single tomb is yet to be found on the site. Whereas other ancient civilizations like the Mayans, for example, are famous for giving their rulers opulent tombs, the leaders of Teotihuacan seem to have vanished without a trace. I guess they were just more low-key. Or maybe they really did manage to head off into the afterlife. When it comes to Teotihuacan, we know so much and yet so little. We've discovered three secret tunnels and numerous remains of all shapes and sizes, yet we still have no idea who the people were who lived there. This knowledge gap will hopefully go away in the future, as archaeologists uncover more of what lies below and make some sense of it. An entrance has been found to the tunnel under the Pyramid of the Moon, so researchers may be making their way to the underworld soon. Let's just hope it hasn't already been looted. To learn more about the confusing world of ancient civilizations, check out our video about the supposed curse on those who opened King Tut's tomb, or how an ancient civilization in Malta vanished. Whichever you choose, we guarantee you'll enjoy it, so click now.